<laughs> Hello, Ramkins. Come on in. My name is Granny Grace, and I was just about to read a story that has to do with Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is coming very soon, isn't it? Well, this story has to do with a turkey that lives in a barnyard, and it's going to be very interesting to see what happens to this turkey, don't you think? Come on and settle yourself in and get ready to listen. The name of the story is called Thanksgiving Pig. Oh, yes, I said turkey, but the name of the story is truly Thanksgiving Pig. The rope is coming, the rope is coming. Feathers flew everywhere as the frantic birds of the barnyard scrambled for their hiding places. But in the midst of the chaos, that one lone turkey slumped over in the dirt. Get up, Sam, yelled Soldier, a ring-necked bird, as he darted past the turkey. Run for cover! Quickly, the birds and animals disappeared. A hush fell over the barnyard. Then someone gasped, Sam! Karen peered out from under the hen house and saw her brother still lying in the dirt. Oh, Granddad, she cried, we have to get him. Old Granddad and Karen raced to Sam's side. Hurry, Sam, Karen pleaded. Time's running out. Old Granddad shook his head. Gobble, gobble. What will we do? What will we do? Silly Sam Turkey just squinted up at his family. Oh, I'm so tired, he yawned. Oh, you two go. I'll just lie here. What's the matter with you, boy, chided Old Granddad. Don't you know what's going on? Farmer's bringing the rope. Sam slowly blinked. It doesn't matter, he sighed. Nothing really matters. Life's just so hard anyway. From somewhere, a voice called out, Hurry! For Giblet's sake, boy, old granddad hollered, Get up and run! But the stubborn turkey wouldn't budge. There's nowhere for me to hide, Sam whined. Anyway, whatever happens, happens. The big bird groaned. My back hurts. Sam, begged Karen, we have to go. Okay, Sam yawned again. <sighs> have a great life. <sighs> then he rolled over on his side and closed his eyes. Ah, frustrated, old granddad and Karen raced to their hiding place. Matilda had been watching the turkey family from her house. The big goose waddled out and down the little ramp. Rocking her head forward and back, she studied Sam as she moved closer. What on earth are you doing, Sam, she asked. Sam's heavy eyelids lifted a little to see the goose. Oh, nothing, just nothing. Nothing, mimicked the goose. No such thing as doing nothing, Sam. Doing nothing is doing something. Don't you know it's Thanksgiving? Sam slowly nodded. Yes, yes, a horrible time. The world's falling apart, and so am I, and nobody cares. Honk! Nobody cares, balked Matilda. Shut your beak, you silly bird. Don't you talk like that. Everybody cares, Sam. Wake up and look around you. Everyone's running for their lives, and they're trying to warn you while you just lie there like everything's fine. Matilda honked and flapped her wings in a flurry, causing dust to fly up everywhere. Sam coughed. <coughs> I can't breathe. Breathe, Matilda yelled. You fool. You won't have a head to use to breathe if you don't move. But Matilda, don't you Matilda me, Sam. Time's up. Get up. Sam sneezed. Oh, great. Now I'm going to be sick. You are sick, Matilda squawked. Turning, she strutted back to her house, leaving silly Sam sitting in the dust. The barnyard was strangely quiet. Slowly, the gate creaked open. A tall figure walked in and over to Sam. In his hand, the farmer held a thick rope. Those darn birds are hiding again, the farmer said to himself, all except this one. What's wrong with you, turkey? Well, no matter. At least I don't have to go chasing after one. Sam didn't look up at farmer or the rope. With one hand, the farmer straightened Sam's head. Come on, bird, let me slip this rope round you. It's time to go. The tired turkey rolled his head to one side. Again, farmer straightened Sam's head. Hold still, you dumb bird. And again, Sam's head rolled to its side. Farmer huffed. Well, if you won't walk out of here, bird, you'll ride out. I'm going to go get the cart. You wait right here. The gate creaked shut as the farmer and the rope left the barnyard. One by one, the residents came out of hiding and gathered around Sam. Get up, Sam, cried Karen. Farmer will be back. Sam did nothing. We'll have to hide him ourselves, said old granddad. 
The turkeys leaned up against Sam and tried to push as hard as they could, but they couldn't move the big bird. Everyone tried helping, but the bird was just too heavy. The goose, however, wanted to nip at him, but thought the better of it. You are by far the laziest bird I have ever seen, declared Myrtle the sheep. He's just stubborn, replied Soldier. I think he's depressed, Karen sympathized. I think he's stupid, added Matilda. Well, whatever he is, said Peter Pig, he's Thanksgiving dinner. All eyes moved from the slumped over turkey to the mud-covered pig. The big hog stood on his hind legs, chomping on a piece of moldy bread. He had been lying in the mud and then had rolled himself in sticks and autumn leaves. The pig was truly a scary sight, but a familiar one to his barnyard pals. That's it, cried Soldier. That's what, everyone asked. Soldier explained. We'll camouflage him. We'll cover Sam with mud and sticks and leaves to look like the pig. When Farmer returns, he'll think it's Peter instead of Sam. And don't worry, Peter, no one's looking for Thanksgiving pork chops. The pig just shrugged and kept on eating. And so the little group propped up Sam in a sitting position and began working on his disguise. Peter Pig gathered mud from his pen and smeared it through Sam's feathers. The barnyard birds collected leaves and twigs, which the mice stuck onto the muddy turkey. Betsy the cow gathered some of her corn mash and spread it over the big bird. Myrtle contributed some of her wool. Cobbler the horse spit out mouthfuls of grain over the turkey. And a little blue bird flew over Sam, dropping blades of grass on him. He's coming, a sparrow on lookout called. Again, birds scurried to their hiding places. The sheep and the pig trotted off to their pens. The horse and cow slipped away into the barn. All was quiet again. The gate creaked open, and in walked the farmer, swinging the rope in one hand and wheeling in a wooden cart with the other. He stood over the camouflaged turkey, then spoke in a confused voice. What? What's this? Hey, pig, where's the turkey? He was just here. Sam didn't answer. Farmer chuckled. It's amazing. Every time I come looking for one of my birds, they're always gone. Don't know where, but they always go somewhere. He called out to his waiting wife. Hey, Mabel, looks like we're going out for Thanksgiving dinner. Those darn birds are gone again. Looking down at Sam, Farmer said to himself, But you know, this pig here gives me an idea. Hey, Mabel, let's have ham for Christmas. Ham? Peter Pig was listening from his pen. He stopped munching on his corn when he heard that dreaded word. Did he mean me, he thought. Farmer turned and walked out of the barnyard, taking the rope in the cart with him. The squeaky gate was shut. The barnyard birds and animals scrambled out from their hiding places. With cheerful noises, they ran quickly to Sam. It worked, laughed Karen. Sam, you're alive. Old Granddad nudged his grandson. Gobble, gobble, gully boy, you made it. Everyone helped clean off the messy turkey as best they could. They took turns carting away the evidence while Cobbler the horse poured buckets of water over the ground around Sam. You are one blessed bird, crooned Matilda. Look at what your family and friends did for you. They saved you from the rope, Sam. Slowly, Sam looked up. He saw the smiling faces of his family, of friends he did not even know he had. For the first time ever, the jerky turkey felt gratitude in his heart. And for the first time ever, Sam smiled and said, Thank you. Matilda gasped. Soldier laughed. Karen just sighed. Aw. Old Granddad let a tear trickle down his feathery face. Everyone rejoiced. They laughed and chatted about the crisis that had just passed. Everyone, that is, except Peter Pig. Now he was facing his own crisis. Christmas was just a month away. After things settled down, the group turned its attention to their next dilemma. What to do about Peter Pig? That Christmas, Sam happily donated some of his own feathers to the little barnyard community, who successfully transformed Peter Pig into the biggest and grandest looking sheep in the barnyard. The scripture for the story is found in Proverbs, Proverbs 17:17. 17, 17. A friend loves at all times. Now, that was a very silly story about a very silly turkey. But he had friends that cared about him and family that cared about him. And because of that, he was saved from the farmer's rope. And I know each and every one of us go through hard times. And it's nice to know we have family and friends around to be with us and help us through. And then we can also be a friend and help others through. That's what's important to God. 
And that's how God loves the world. It's through us. And it's through us loving and caring for each other. So this Thanksgiving, enjoy your day and be thankful for God, to God for all the wonderful things he does for us. And above all else, remember, Jesus loves you very, very much. And I do too. Until next time, bye-bye.